Hey everyone, and welcome to our ACT tips and tricks for 2023. So for those of you who are familiar with our channel, you know that we do one of these videos every year. But this year we have something very interesting and very strange we're doing. But before that, let me introduce all of you to Joe McCormick, our director of test prep, who is going to be here helping me keep this video, well, on the tracks. Hey everyone, and thank you so much for that kind introduction, Grantley. You're definitely right. We do have something a little different planned for this year's tips and tricks video. I, for one, am super excited about these celebrity guests. Uh, Joe, I think you, you might have just you might have just ruined the kind of the, the surprise. No, nah, I, I don't think I ruined anything. I mean, they were going to find out anyway, right? After all, our, our first guest is already here. I think we should just get started. Oh, she's already here. Well, this is not somebody I would want to keep waiting. So let's start with this. And by the way, if you have any questions throughout any point of this video, jump into the Granite Education Discord and leave a question for me, Joe, or any of our celebrity guests. We would love to answer it for you and hang out with you and help you get all things test prep figured out. Lastly, this is YouTube, so like and subscribe and all that stuff because otherwise the algorithm won't rank us and you'll never see our content. Let's go. All right, guys, so this first tip pertains to punctuation, specifically semicolons. So I'm sure it's been a while since any of you have learned about semicolons, so really pay attention to this one. And without further ado, I'm gonna turn things over to Miss Dolly Parton. Hey y'all, it's me, Dolly. I'm so honored to be speaking with y'all today. I got a tip for y'all that I think is just gonna knock your socks off. This is some old Tennessee knowledge passed down from my granddaddy. So there's pretty much only one thing you need to know about semicolons for the ACT. Treat them like a period. Semicolons on this test are used to turn two independent sentences into one sentence. Y'all should look at this wonderful example. Jenna decided to complete her reading assignment at the beach. The weather was perfect. Can you hear how those are two independent sentences? That means we could use a period to conjoin them. Since a period would work, I also know that a semicolon would work. So answer choice B is the best answer here. If you want some more information on why the other answers are wrong, go ahead and ask Joe or Grant Lee on the Discord. I've got to get back on the road. Thanks, Dolly. And now we're on to the next tip. Doja. Give us tip number two for the ACT. Yeah, Joe. I do have a good tip for ACT English. Categorize transition words. My students are always getting confused on transition words. Tell us a little more about these categor categories. Here are the three categories I want you to think about. Affirmative, contradictory, and order. Affirmative transitions are words like therefore, also, and moreover. These words express an agreement between sentences. Contradictory transitions are words like however, nevertheless, and regardless. These words imply some sort of logical mismatch between the sentences. Ordering transition words are probably the simplest. Words like next, after, and then. These words just tell you what order events took place. That seems like a really smart tip. Do you think you could apply these category categories to this ACT question? Yeah, I can do that. In this example, we have three examples of contradictory transition words, however, nevertheless, and alternatively. The only affirmative option is therefore. These sentences definitely seem to agree with one another. She got her doctorate. She was a qualified applicant. There's no contradiction there. So go with answer A. Thanks, Doja. So this is going great so far, but the voices sound a little weird. Is that... Are we sure that was really Doja? Yeah, sure. I mean, who else could it be, right? Anyway, let's just keep this thing moving, right? We got another ACT English tip coming up. Uh, this one is all about redundancy. I'm gonna turn things over to Mr. Samuel L. Jackson. Hi, everyone. I'm very happy to be able to share with you ACT tip number three. This tip can be summarized in two words, eliminate redundancy. Often on the ACT, you will be asked to replace a phrase with another group of words. On these questions, you want to avoid saying the same thing twice. So is that why a lot of tutors say, if you have to guess on the ACT English, you should always pick the shortest answer? Yes, Joe, that is correct. Take a look at this example. Wait, do you see the redundancy? 
They have already said annual, so they don't need to say for the year. The shortest way to create this sentence would be to delete the underlined portion. Mr. Pascal, if you don't mind, give us some tips for the ACT math. Hi, Joe. Thank you so much for the kind introduction. Let's talk about math tips for the ACT. You know, when I played The Mandalorian, I was really inspired by my character's love of gadgets and tools. You need to remember to use your gadgets on the ACT, specifically the PolySmalt 2 app on your graphing calculator. This acronym stands for Polynomial Root Finder and Simultaneous Equation Solver. It is a great way to easily solve problems related to systems of equations or polynomials. Check out this tutorial for solving this system. Remember to use your calculator. This is the way. Wow, this is the way. Thanks, Mr. Pascal. Check this out, guys. I'm using the PolySmalt app. If I go ahead and just click solve here, it gives me my answer, 1-5, answer choice D. Wow, I'm not sure I even knew the TI-84 could do that. It's pretty cool. Oh yeah, very cool. Just like this next guest, you might know from movies such as the Ocean's Eleven remake or Fantastic Mr. Fox. That's right, we got Clooney in the building bringing you another ACT calculator trick. Hi Joe, I am a very busy actor, so I will get straight to ACT tip number five. This tip is very simple. Remember that the imaginary root I is a button on your calculator. Wait, we can just use I as a button in the calculator? That mean, does that mean it'll just solve any imaginary numbers question? Yes, Joe, that is absolutely correct. Once you have locked down this skill, every ACT math question with imaginary numbers should be very easy for you to solve. Take a look at this example. I simply enter the complex fraction into my calculator, then hit enter. The answer on my calculator is in the exact format as the real answer. I'm sure you and Grantly can provide a great in-depth explanation on imaginary numbers, but it really doesn't need to be that complicated. Just put it in your calculator. Wow, that guy's voice sure is distinctive. That was definitely either the man himself or a very, very convincing copy. We're not going to worry about that too much. We're going to shift over to a good tip for the reading section coming to you from none other than Ariana Grande herself. Hey guys, so happy to be speaking with you today. I want to share ACT tip number six, which is treat the reading section like a scavenger hunt. Oh, nice. I'm excited about this tip. Oh, yeah. You see, students often overthink questions on the reading section. They try to bring in too much external logic or outside information. That really isn't what we need to do on this section. Almost every answer should have clear support from the text. Take a look at this example. You may need to take a second to read. Okay, I'm reading, reading a little bit more. Right now, it seems to me like all of these could be potential benefits of this forest bathing thing. Sure, logically, they might all make sense. That said, only three of these are actually mentioned in the text. Muscle growth is not mentioned. So while we might think it's a potential benefit, it is not a benefit mentioned in the text. So B here is the correct answer. Okay, thanks, Ms. Grande. All right, guys, so we're moving on to our last reading tip. This one comes from an artist who knows a lot about finding the perfect word. It's Taylor Swift. Hi, everyone. So happy to be here. I wanted to share a tip with your viewers about word choice questions on the reading ACT. Honestly, this also applies to the English section. Sometimes we are asked to replace an underlined word. When we get to these problems, we are often faced with at least one word whose definition we do not know. It can be really tempting to choose a word that we are unsure about because our instincts tell us that this unknown word is probably some special definition. Never choose a word you don't know. Bigger or more complicated words are often placed in these questions just to trick you. Check out this example. All right, everyone. Now we're moving on to ACT tip number eight. I'm not actually going to tell you guys who's giving this tip. So if you don't mind, comment and see if you can get it right. Hello, viewers. I'm here to bring you a tip for the ACT science section. For the ACT science, you need to remember one thing. Think about direct and indirect relationships. A direct relationship between variables is a relationship where increasing one variable increases the other. A good example of this is the relationship between height and weight. Generally, humans get heavier as they get taller. Indirect relationships, on the other hand, are just the opposite. They describe trends where one variable's increase causes a decrease in the other. Think about the relationship between the price of a good and the likelihood that you buy it. 
In general, the more expensive something gets, the less likely I am to purchase it. On the ACT science, you will be given descriptions of complex scientific experiments, but they can be made much easier by distilling the process into a simple exercise of identifying relationships between variables. Wow, thanks for that great tip. So tip number nine is all about warming up your brain on test day. So here's what I want you to do. On the morning of the real exam, you need to spend five to 10 minutes reading something, whether it's a piece of a novel that you like, piece of an autobiography, maybe it's a journal article you've been assigned from school, maybe it's a newspaper or a magazine. Whatever the case, you just wanna spend a couple minutes warming up your brain. We know the brain obviously isn't a muscle, but we can use the analogy of warming up your muscles before a big sports game. I know some of y'all are athletes and you're probably used to this idea that you're gonna perform better when you're warmed up and you've done some like stretches or maybe a little running before a big game. The ACT is the exact same. Warm up your brain before the real exam by reading. So tip number 10 is all about sleep. And if you're familiar with this channel, you know we care a lot about sleep. And if you're interested in sleep, go ahead and like and subscribe so you can learn more. But a lot of students know that sleep is obviously important for academic success. But the struggle is they start thinking a lot about sleep the night before a test and they get in their heads and put a lot of what I like to call sleep pressure on themselves. So what you wanna to do to kind of avoid that is gonna seem a little bit reverse of what you might expect. But the night before tests, you actually wanna take pressure off yourself to fall asleep really early or to sleep super long. You should go to bed the same time you normally would, but take that pressure off yourself, knowing that if you don't sleep perfectly, it's not the end of the world. Your body stores up sleep, it'll be okay. And if you wanna know more about the research and the science behind this, check out the video that I've got linked up here. I explain it in much greater detail than I could in this tips and tricks video. But again, just take that sleep pressure off yourself. If you're laying there and you can't fall asleep, that is totally gonna be okay.